uh, let's get into the last portion uh, of our uh, of our stream here. And I don't think this statement should come as any surprise to anybody that watches anything that I do. Uh, I think the Democratic Party is dead. I mean, the Republican Party died a couple years ago. when they were forced to coronate Trump and then justify it. You know, uh, in the 90s, Joe Biden and, and the Clintons pushed the Democrats further to the right and then push, in turn pushed the Republicans even further to the right <laughs> uh, towards, you know, the, the, the more fascistic authoritarian right. Um. And then Trump kind of made them more outright into that as well. Uh, so, I, you know, the, the GOP is is dead, but the GOP doesn't pretend to be the friend of the working class. Uh, they're they're very openly not the friend of the working class uh, or, 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 or immigrants or women or LG, name a minority. The GOP claims to not be friends with them unless they can tokenize them, so on and so forth. Right. Uh, but the Democrats do. They, they placate to them claim that they're big and friendly and all that and they're not there's there's marginal differences between the two parties but uh but but not a lot not a lot i think they will say nice things about the lgbtq community i think they will say nice things about immigrants but then they will just vote in line with the republicans so we can look at how the democratic party is dying in front of our eyes uh, by looking at one Andrew Cuomo. Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, has been steeped in, in controversy for quite some time. And, and everybody fucking lost their shit over Andrew Cuomo um, in uh, 2020 because he could form sentences uh, on television, um, full sentences, which was kind of the bar for beating Trump is can you say sentences that sound like human sentences? And he was like, yeah, I can probably do that. Can I do that on television every day? Can I start by reciting what day of the week it is and spending a good solid 10 minutes talking specifically about the day of the week? Because that's something that he fucking definitely did. I, I called it Cuomo and the COVID. That's the show, which... Unfortunately, you know, I don't know if he's going to get season two for Cuomo and the COVID. I don't know if he's going to get a season two. And that is uh, a shame because it's uh, that was a riveting program. You guys, I got to learn the day of the week. Uh, we counted. There were charts. Sometimes uh, he would uh, have a sandwich. Fucking riveting. Fuck Game of Thrones. Give me nine seasons of Andrew Cuomo sitting in front of six reporters that desperately need a story. Ugh. I will binge that all day, guys. Why do I need a plot and, and character development? He won an Emmy for those things. I think Holly pointed that out in Rockfin. I'm going to double check. I think Holly, you might have pointed that out. Yeah. Uh, oh, she put. He's a best-selling author. Yes. Holly pointed out that he's a best-selling author, but he did win a he did win an Emmy uh, as well. And uh, I I think I pointed that out in the in the pre the, the little pre thing that I do the pre roll thing. Uh, he won an Emmy. He has a best-selling book that he did not write. And now he and then and then we found out that he lied about nursing home numbers and his reasoning was, well, Trump, really, that's your reasoning for shaking the faith of people on information coming out of the government during a fucking worldwide pandemic. You're just going to lie about people's deaths. You're going to make people feel safer for what Trump, because Trump might say something mean about you. Trump's going to say something mean about you regardless, isn't it? And the DOJ just accepted that as the as the as the valid explanation. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Is it? 
And then we find out that he's got sexual assault charges. And now the sexual assault charges are, uh, are, are, are you know, everything's kind of escalating in regards to that. The ironic thing is Biden fucking called him to, and, and said he, he wants uh, Cuomo to resign, which, by the way, he's not doing. And, and I think part of the reason why the Democratic Party is is kind of throwing him under the bus is for that reason. I think if he would have if he would have uh, stopped talking about it and kind of faded into the mist, as I think the party wanted him to, that none of this would have escalated as much as it would have. I, I, I hate to say it, but that's kind of what it what it would. You know, they tried to bury Tara Reid. And, and then they shifted the narrative to say, well, Tara Reid is the only person that has any allegations against Joe Biden uh, when there were tons of women that came out and they just ignored them. Right. They kind of didn't talk about them. There was a media blackout. But because he went out and made all these public statements that kind of blew up where he was basically like, I'm Italian. We talk by touching people. If you don't like touching people, then don't be Italian. Oh, this is not Italian. This is, I think this is how Andrew Cuomo talks. It's, it's a lot of shoulders, and it, you know, when he, when he does when he does Cuomo in the COVID, they said he's got to sit still because too much movement might, um, you know, really get in the way of the riveting plot that he is throwing out there. Um, but that was his excuse, by the way, is he literally said, I like it. It's, it's just the way I make people feel comfortable. You, you know what? I've never felt comfortable is when someone touches me when I don't want to be touched. When I get when I get like a random hug from somebody, I'm a hugger. I'm a big I'm I'm a fan of huggers. Uh, um, you know, I'm I'm a hugger. I'm a big fan of hugging and stuff. Uh, my my cat will attest to it. I give him hugs, but when he when he says enough is enough, guess what? I back the fuck off. Not Andrew. He's like you will feel comfortable, and I will hug you because that's how you show love. You know how you don't show love by forcing it on people. So here's here's a, a share post article that talks about this. This is a uh, uh, this is from the um, report, based in part on interviews with 179 individuals. 179 individuals specifically find that the governor sexually harassed a number of current and former New York State employees uh, by, among other things, engaging in unwelcome and non-consensual touching, as well as making numerous offensive comments of a sex suggestive and sexual nature that created a hostile work environment for women. Uh, our investigation re revealed that governor's uh, the, the governor's sexual harassing behavior was not limited to members of his own staff, but extended to other state employees, including a state trooper on his protective detail and members of the public. We also conclude that the executive chamber's culture, one filled with fear and intimidation, while at the same time normalizing the governor's behavior, governor's frequent flirtation and gender based comments contributed to the conditions that allowed sexual harassment to occur and persist. That culture also influ influ influenced the improper and inadequate ways in which the executive chamber has responded to allegations of harassment. basically saying he kind of normalized this thing so within his administration it was it became okay to do this specifically for men right for for dudes to go out there and and do and 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 make sexually suggestive comments touch women when they didn't want to be touched here's a here's a a, a really simple piece of advice when it comes to that right uh, and, and this is goes to all the dudes out there. Uh, just don't. Wow. It's really that easy guys. Hey, uh, maybe don't talk about, uh, a lady's ass when she's just hanging out at the bar. You can compliment people. I'm not saying don't compliment people, right? I, I, when I see my friends uh, and I think they look really great, I go, Hey, you look really great today. That is a fantastic dress. But I'm not saying like, oh, man, you can bounce a quarter off those tits or I don't know, whatever the fucking creepazoid statement is. Don't do that. 
if if I I've, I've done it to strangers when strangers walk, I particularly like people's hair. I got great hair. When I see great hair, I'm like, hey, fucking super awesome hair. You're killing it with that hair. But I'm not like, oh, I would put that hair in a fuck. Ew. So simple piece of advice for all the dudes out there. Don't. You should not want to be an Andrew Cuomo. And the fact that this guy was was basically a, the Democratic Party god for a little while, the party's dead. The party's throwing him under the bus because they know that if they back this guy, just like they backed Joe Biden, there's that's it. They've lost a bunch of votes. Now, pair that up with uh, the loss of Nina Turner, uh, which the only reason why uh, – well, not the only reason. There's probably several other reasons. One of the reasons why Nina Turner lost the election, the special election in Ohio – uh, for uh, a seat in the House in Congress is because of the Clinton machine. They spent uh, millions of dollars advertising against her. Millions of dollars. We briefly mentioned this uh, on last night's Action for Assange vigil that I co-host every other Tuesday. Um, and it's a super fun time. But we briefly talked about Nina Turner because I think the results came out right as we were wrapping things up. But not only that, but I bet you a lot of progressives just didn't vote. People in my position... Right. Like I'm, I'm not big on electoral politics, but I will say I will, you know, like people like India Walton in, in Buffalo. That's very hopeful. It's also concerning because she ran under the Democratic Party. And we all know that when you, you're a socialist or a progressive that runs within the Democratic Party is a higher likelihood that you're going to get co-opted by the party. That's just the reality of it. That's just what they do. Look at AOC. Look at the squad. I defer to uh, caucus leadership on Venezuela. I thought you were a socialist. Why would you not stand up for that country? They just extended the eviction moratorium. You know, it's a temporary 60 or 60 day extension. That's just for them to not be bothered while they're on vacation. You could have just canceled the rent. You could have worked on legislation to cancel the rent. Why do you get to go on vacation while people are fucking losing their goddamn houses? Right now, we should see a mass exodus of the fucking party. If people like Andrew Cuomo get to stay in their fucking seats of, uh, seats of power and continue to be the shit example of how you treat women in the workplace... Because you are in a position of power. And, and if it's okay for people that champion Medicare for all and, and a universal basic income and canceling student debt and, and for the Democratic machine to attack them to ensure that none of those policies will ever be talked about in Congress, why are you with this party? If you if those, if those are any anything that you give a shit about, if you care about women's rights, if you care about, uh, you know, uh, sexual health, if you care about justice, if you care about universal health care, if you care about a universal basic income, if you care about canceling student debt, if you care about the environment, the Democratic Party is not the fucking party for you. It's dead. So is the Republican Party. They're both dead. The whole duopoly is dead. It's clinging to life. And look at the way it's operating. It's trying to squash out people that can actually make legislative change. And how does that legislative change come? When we demand it of them. They are our employees. We don't bend the knee to them. They have to bend the knee to us. They have to earn our votes. You don't just give them your votes and expect them to do maybe kind of sort of what you want. If they are not willing to do what you want them to do, then you don't give them their vote. It should be as simple as fucking that. The second this happened, the People's Party started surging uh, on uh, Twitter. Nina, Nina has endorsed the People's Party. I don't know why she chose to run within the Democrat. I mean, I, I, I kind of do. It's, it's, a, it's, it's all a money thing. Uh, I'm, I'm going to release this podcast with Brian Becker in about a week or so here. And I talk about India Walton with him um, and why she ran within the Democratic Party. It's, it's the only way to play in the duopoly right now. The whole system needs to kind of be re reshaped from the ground up.
So I, I, I hope, I hope, you know, a bunch of you guys drop your registrations for the Democratic Party and register as something else. Push for the People's Party. See if there's a Socialist Party in your in your neck of the woods. This party is dead. It's never going to do anything for you. It never has. It never will. Unless we, the people, demand that it does. And even when we do demand that it does, we I mean, 72% of people, according to a Fox News poll, want universal health care, and they can't even fucking put it onto a floor vote because it's, quote, not the right time. We can get $15 minimum wage. Where? How did that How did that work out? Did that happen? Because I don't fucking see people getting paid $15 minimum wage unless the restaurant or, or, the, or the business or the establishment wants to fucking do that. The party doesn't work for you anymore. Parties never work for you. The Democratic Party since its inception has been a party of private industries. Since its inception. At least there was one point in history at the very beginning of the Republican Party where they actually stood by the people and listened to what the people wanted. They ran on abolition. They ran on... They were basically socialist farmers is what they were. Fucking Lincoln was in correspondence with Karl Marx. Holly, Holly says, uh, I'm, I'm guessing this is, this is why people like Andrew Cuomo. It's the gray hair distinguished in dignity. Is, uh, well, I, I would use the word dignity very loosely in this situation. Uh, says, cancel rents and rents are too high. Yeah, in a lot of cities they are. And, and even Pittsburgh, which is r rather um, affordable to live in, the rents are starting to go up. Uh, and as you point out, Holly, we do live in a uniparty. Again, there, there are differences between the Democrats and the Republicans, but they're very marginal, small, you know, almost inconsequential decisions. Like they, like I said, they'll say nice things about gay people. They'll say nice things about immigrants and women, but they won't do anything about it. And that's, that's the problem that I have with it. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out these videos. If you enjoyed them, please hit the like button. Please make sure that you share this out. And please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, especially if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or Facebook or something like that. Please do make sure that you are subscribed because they unsubscribe and unfollow people from my page quite often. Uh, which is very frustrating, as you can imagine. Uh, and please do make sure that if you enjoy it, share this out, because sharing is a, is a huge way uh, that you can help independent media fight back against the censorship and the suppression that we face on a pretty consistent basis from big tech. Uh, I've got live shows coming up, guys. Live stand-up comedy events are back. They're back. I'm so excited about them. Uh, August 14th, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Irma Freeman Center for Imagination. September 17th, I'm at the Art House Projects in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. September 30th, I'm at the Bardstown Lounge in Louisville, Kentucky. October 6th, I'm going to be at the Robin Theater in Lansing, Michigan. October 7th, I'm going to be opening for Ron Placone and Graham Elwood in Cleveland, Ohio. October 8th, I'm going to be at Trixie's in Detroit, Michigan, and I'm adding shows pretty much consistently. Uh, I'm not touring as heavily as I was before, but I am adding um, several cities to this tour date, so please make sure that you stay up to date with what I'm doing uh, and when I'm coming through your town. The best way to do that is to go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, that's where all the details are going to be. That's where all the ticket information is going to be. That's where you'll find out when I'm coming to your city uh, in the near future. I'm booking dates all over the place. So, uh, And I'm very, very excited that these live events are coming back. But I'm also going to be doing virtual shows. Uh, they're going to be less frequent, but I will be continuing to do those virtual shows as well. So don't worry. We're going to be doing some virtual shows coming up 
Uh, I'm also going to be putting out new Forkful of Noodles content as well. Uh, so don't worry, those those things are not going away uh, just because the, 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 the live touring is, is back. Uh, but again, you can go get all that de- uh, information right on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H. M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can check out all my stand-up comedy albums there, past videos. You can make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member, which does get you free tickets to both live and virtual events uh, You know when, when I come through your town. So uh, be sure to check that out. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you next time. Take it easy, everyone.